How to set up multi-factor authentication for SSH on Ubuntu 16.04 SSH uses passwords for authentication by default. This is still only a single factor. If a bad actor has compromised your computer, then they can use your key to compromise your servers as well. We'll set up multi-factor authentication to combat that. Multi-factor authentication MFA requires more than one factor in order to authenticate or log in. This means a bad actor would have to compromise multiple things, like both your computer and your phone, to get in. One common factor is an OTTP app, like Google Authenticator. OTTP Open Authentication Time-Based One-Time Password is an open protocol that generates a one-time use password, commonly a six-digit number that is recycled every 30 seconds. This video will go over how to enable SSH authentication using an OTTP app in addition to an SSH key in Ubuntu server. Logging into your server via SSH will then require two factors across two channels, thereby making it more secure than a password or SSH key alone. In this step, we'll install and configure Google's PAM, PAM step, we'll install and configure Google's PAM, PAM, which stands for Pluggable Authentication Module, is an authentication infrastructure used on Linux systems to authenticate a user. Because Google made an OTTP app, they also made a PAM that generates TOTPS and is fully compatible with any OTTP app, like Google Authenticator or Authy. First, update Ubuntu's repository cache update. Next, is update Ubuntu's repository cache update. Configuring OPEN SSH because we'll be making SSH changes over SSH, it's important to never close your initial SSH connection. Instead, open a second SSH. Next, install the PAM package libpim Google Authentication to do testing. This is to avoid locking yourself out of your server if there was a mistake in your SSH configuration. Once everything works, then you can safely close any sessions. To begin open up the PAM SSH configuration file for editing using Nano or Yorfta run the initialization app Google Authenticator. With the PAM installed, we'll use a helper app that comes with the PAM to generate a TOTP key for the user you want to add a second factor to. This key is generated on a user-by-user -user basis, not system-wide. This means every user that Note, make sure you record the secret key, verification code, and the recovery codes in a safe place, like a password manager. The recovery codes are the only way to regain access if you, for example, lose access to your TOTP app. Once you finish this setup, if you want to back up your secret key, you can copy the tilde slash Google Authenticator file to a trusted location. From there, you can deploy it on additional systems or redeploy it after a backup. Now that Google's PAM is installed and configured, the next step is to configure SSH to use your TOTP key. We'll need to tell SSH about the PAM and then configure SSH to use it. To begin open up the PAM SSH configuration file for editing using Nano or your favorite text editor slash etc slash PAM DSSHD. Add auth required PAM underscore Google underscore authenticator so new lock line to the bottom of the file add include common password. The new lock word at the end of the last line tells the PAM that this authentication method is optional. This allows users without an OTTP token to still log in using their SSH key. Once all users have an OTTP token, you can remove new lock from this line to make MFA mandatory. Next find the line at include common auth and comment it out by adding a hash character as the first character on the line. This tells PAM not to prompt for a password, save and close the file. Next, we'll configure SSH to support. To link your mobile device to your account, select enter a provided key code. Make sure you've chosen to make the key time-based, then select add. 
check user authentication login log tail slash var slash log slash size log file there you will find user successful or failure log with pam ssh keyword as shown screen